Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and as the title of the video suggests, today we're going to be talking about a strange liquid that seems to make electricity, using what's known as pizza electric effect. Or is it piezo electric? Anyway, we'll talk about the effect itself as well, because basically that's the main discovery from this recent paper that is kind of groundbreaking for one simple reason. It's the first time ever that this effect has been actually observed in any liquid ever. Which at least in theory means that we can maybe, one day, produce electricity from liquid. But in this case, a very unique type of a liquid, the one that was discovered over a hundred years ago, but that still hasn't found that niche where it would be used the most. Basically, it's a discovery that still doesn't have a very good practical application. And I actually wanted to start with that. Generally, these types of liquids are referred to as ionic liquid. And by itself, this is a pretty exciting concept. A concept that's actually pretty interesting to explore because of its potential use. And so when I originally found out about this, I was super excited because I've never actually even heard about these. But what exactly is it? Well, it's basically a salt. But instead of being a crystal like the one you see right here, it's a salt that's liquid. Or a liquid that possesses ionic properties. Now, pretty much any salt, including table salt, can actually become a liquid, but normally at really high temperatures. I think for salt it's like over 800 degrees Celsius. Yet some salts become liquid at much lower temperatures. And so there's actually a concept known as RTIL, room temperature ionic liquid, which represents a salt that's in liquid state at room temperature conditions. And what makes these particular liquids different from other liquids is that they're not actually neutral. In other words, unlike water and things like gasoline, which are normally electrically neutral, ionic liquids possess some kind of a charge. And that's because inside they contain a lot of ions. And when this liquid is cooled down enough, it becomes an ionic solid, very similar to table salt. But a few decades ago, scientists realized that in certain ionic liquids, the energy of crystallization was low enough to allow them to exist in very low temperature conditions. In some cases, even sub-zero conditions, going down to some pretty low temperatures in general. But in this case, the actual substances were a lot more complex. But intriguingly enough, despite their discovery, and despite their unusual properties in being basically a salt, but also a liquid, even decades and decades later, nobody actually found a niche yet where these liquids could be used for some sort of an important purpose. In other words, it's like a product that just doesn't have a very good use yet. But room temperature ionic liquids have even been discovered in nature. For example, when certain types of crazy ants get in a battle with fire ants, in order to protect themselves, they basically cover their own bodies with formic acid, which when mixed with acid from fire ants, ends up creating a very intriguing ionic liquid, surprisingly protecting their bodies from any damage. But that's actually the only known use in nature as of today. When it comes to more industrial use, there have been a lot of attempts to try to use these liquids for various purposes. For example, because they're not combustible and are thermally stable, previously these liquids have been proposed for electrolyte or battery use. They can also be used in nuclear fuel processing in various power plants for different types of waste recycling, or in different types of polymer processing where other liquids would not do. Or they can even be used to extract certain compounds for pharmaceutical use. But all of this so far has been hypothetical, and as of today, they still have extremely limited use. Actually, one of the more exciting propositions for science was a potential use of one of these liquids for the base of a spinning liquid mirror telescope that could even be based on the moon. They would actually be really good at that. But one of the highest potentials for their use would be in solar thermal energy, for example, in various solar power towers that use a unique technology in order to produce and then store energy. There's a video in the description that describes this a little bit better. And so in theory, the storage of energy in this case could be done by these unusual salts. But now, 150 years after their initial discovery, someone accidentally discovered a completely new phenomenon that these liquids contain, which in theory could make them finally useful after all. Here we're talking about piezoelectric effect, or piezoelectric effect, whatever you want to call it. The electric effect that up until now has only been seen in solids and mostly in crystals. And that's of course when you produce electric charge by applying pressure to a certain material. For example, that's the effect used in various quartz clocks, where if you actually supply electricity to a quartz crystal, it will start producing pressure and vibrating. And of course, vice versa, if you were to press it, it would produce electricity. But apart from crystal watches and a lot of other small devices, it's even used in certain cell phone speakers and even certain lighters, like the ones we use for lighting barbecues. So despite this being a relatively small effect, it's actually widely used to either produce electricity 
or to use electricity to produce some kind of a deformation. But for the most part, this phenomenon has always relied on various crystals, usually containing specific ions on the inside. Yet now the scientists have confirmed it seems to also happen in liquids, ionic liquids. And moreover, ionic liquids that can actually stay liquid at room temperatures. And like with so many other discoveries, found completely by accident when the researchers accidentally applied pressure to the cylinder containing the liquid. And they discovered that it seems to release electricity. The more pressure they applied, the more electricity it released. In the process, realizing that there seems to be some kind of a charge that builds up inside of these liquids, release suddenly when you apply pressure to all of this. Although important side note here would be, it's not a lot of charge. It's about one-tenth of what you would expect from a similar size crystal. So in that sense it's not super efficient. But it possesses properties that crystals do not possess. For one, being a liquid, it means that we can actually create any shape, potentially allowing us to have various designs for future batteries. They would also be a lot more environmentally friendly compared to other solid materials and can actually decompose really quickly. But furthermore, the scientists discovered that when applying pressure to these liquids, they also change other properties as well. So they don't just release electricity, they also seem to change the way that they bend the light while changing other optical properties that can actually be used in a lot of different technologies. I'm going to assume it's going to involve lasers. Lots and lots of lasers. And though it's not entirely clear how exactly this works yet, the scientists believe that the charge builds up inside the liquid, suddenly releasing when the liquid is pressed or squeezed, with all this restarting once the liquid settled. Confirming that essentially what the scientists discovered is the first ever liquid with piezoelectric effects. But I guess here we don't really know if this goes anywhere just yet. Since these liquids have been trying to discover their use for the past 150 years, this might be just another discovery that goes nowhere. On the other hand, because of the changes in optical properties and their overall ability to store energy, they could find some use in energy storage, especially for various renewables or even nuclear power reactors that already use various liquid salts for different types of energy storage. Or maybe it goes nowhere. It could be just a discovery that just looks cool, does something cool, leaving it as a kind of a funky experiment you can conduct by yourself, but that doesn't actually do anything very practical. Either way, still pretty awesome. I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this particular discovery and maybe even some applications in some of the future studies. Until then though, that's it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.